Hey Motion Designer, my name is Cameron with Motion Science and today we're going to talk about this intro that you may have seen on some of the videos here on the channel. This is an introduction that I've been asked a lot about. How did I go about creating it? What was my creative process? So that's what we're going to talk about today. Let's dive in. All right, whenever I'm starting something like this, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be inspired by the audio. So you can see here are the waveformers pulled up and I also added some keyframes here if I hit U on the keyboard to create some keyframes to just do a very simple fade out like we see here. Hitting LL on the keyboard again, you can see the waveform. So what I like to do is I find a music track that inspires me, bring it into After Effects or sometimes Premiere Pro, and I play around with like, what do I visually see when listening to this track? So let's just play it. So I like some of those piano hits like right there at the beginning, that kind of glitchy sound we hear right in here. We've got another piano sound here, here. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll add markers on my timeline at these different points that are inspiring to me so that I know like, okay, this is a pivotal point in the music. Let me put something visually interesting here at this point. Here's another hit. There's some glitchy stuff happening here. And then there's some really cool, like really quick moments here with some like clicking sounds. So I found this music track, this audio track to be interesting because that's melodic, right? It's got a really nice like piano sound to it. It's pretty, but it also has like this glitchiness to it that I found interesting because I thought I could put some cool visuals to it. So from this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump into my next comp here and I just start laying out the footage, right? So I've got my audio track here at the bottom. And then I've got a variety of pieces here. I've got animations that you can see here is a folder of animations that I've pulled from previous work I've created in motion science. I've also got images here. These are still images because once we get further down into the timeline here, you'll remember there was that point in the music where it was like just very quick, very glitchy. And it's an opportunity for me to put still images here because we're only gonna see them for one frame. If I zoom in here, Let's just bring this over and this over. You can see like here is an image of the Nike tutorial we did for one of the workshops. And if I hit page down, it's only up there for one frame. Here's a cloth tear workshop, page down. Here's an ash right now. This is a video, but we're only showing it for one frame. And this is actually a great opportunity to tell you that if you're interested in going deeper into courses and workshops around high level motion design, then I highly encourage you to check out the Motion Science membership over at motionscience.tv slash mastery. Inside this membership, you're gonna find hundreds of projects just like this one, including the project files, and they can help you elevate your motion design to develop a very striking cinematic style through our trainings, our techniques, and our supportive community. So I definitely invite you to check it out. Okay, so you can see very quick frames here, but if I play the music, right, it's very quick. It's like this very quick moment here. So if I actually preview this in this section here, you're gonna see, you can see how fast that is, right? Because it's got those really interesting music hits to it. So again, searching out the music track, I was like, oh man, I can totally see some really cool moments happening here. So I just go through and I bring in my clips, I bring in my still images, and I play around with it. I'm looking at like clip one and clip two. Do these visually, resonate together, right? Like going from this film to this film. Okay, yeah, we're going to film strips here. And then we're gonna go into a UI animation and then we're gonna switch to a grunge animation, right? But overall, these pieces are working together and that's because I've taken the time to play around. You know, like I like to just bring pieces in. I kind of time them out, like I said, to the audio. So I find, you know, like this moment here needs to be one, two, three, four, four frames, right? I'll time these out and I'll just kind of slide things around like, okay, well maybe this one works better here and maybe this one works, you know, better here. And like, let me play that back. I do a lot of previewing at this point. A lot of times what I also like to do is I will just set an end point and an out point like this. And I'm just gonna keep playing it back over and over again with the audio. Typically the audio is going, I'm not talking over it. And as it's going, you know, like I said, I'm gonna be dragging things around, seeing like, okay, does this work here? Maybe this should slide here. Maybe that should go there. Okay, yeah, that's interesting, I like that. I actually kinda of like that better than my original, right? I like going from that film to that skull. That's pretty cool. I actually like that a lot. 
gonna go ahead and undo that for now. And I just play around in sections, right? I don't focus so much on going through the entire eight second track here. I'm gonna play in sections. So you can see right now I'm only playing with one second and 16 frames and I'm working at 24 frames per second. So I'm working with 40 frames here at the beginning, right? And I'm kind of fine tuning that. Now, here's an interesting point in the music here and you can see these are labeled red because it's just the same clip repeating itself, this UFO clip, because there's kind of like this glitchy sound to it, right? So it has like this stutter effect. I think of things like American Horror Story where we like this glitchy, you know, that's just off the top of my head, but. This is pretty cool. It's just the same clip repeating itself one, two, three, four times here to get this kind of glitch look. Then I continue moving through and just adding clips and deciding. A lot of people really resonated with this image and I've got a YouTube video out here that uh, I talk about how I made this. So this one's up a little bit longer, but there's also a moment here in the music track. And if I turn the music track back on, Right, it's just like this nice moment, right? Piano hit and then it kind of sits for a minute because like there's all this chaos leading up to this. Right, so it's a nice moment, right? There's all these really quick clips. Da -da 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 -da. And then let's just, let's pause for a moment. Let's give the audience some breathing room. We don't want to overwhelm too much, right? Let's give them some breathing room here. So that clip sits up there a little bit longer. We go into these clips here, moving through this. You can see here's a moment where I kind of played around, like should this clip be up the entire time? No, let's drag a clip over the top of it here, drop it in and continue to move through this. This is a nice moment here. We've got a 3D render into another 3D render, right? We're going from a box, a very geometric box into like this kind of plexus fractal 3D render. It was a lot of complexity. So simple to complex, but they're both, you know, centered frame they're both objects facing the camera really nice moments you know in a lot of these it's really challenging to even understand what we're looking at here but these are all still frames or animations from material that is taught in the motion science membership and then i just ended it right here with just a very quick logo animation now this is my logo animation but i did use some time remapping to speed things up because I have a slow version of my logo and a fast version and I wanted to speed it up so we can get it all in the right timing and then boom, we're out. So that was the next process, right? Just playing around with the edit. This is probably the process that takes the longest of just moving clips around and playing with things and having fun in short sections. And then finally, what we did is I came in here and these all these layers now marked in pink. These are all layers that I added effects to them just to make it even more visually interesting. So for this very first one here, we used a film transition from Red Giant to transition on into the clip. The transition has this old film in it, so it makes it even more like there's another clip here, right? It's not just the film projector at this point. And we're gonna transition again, and we're using an ultra glow, and we're using a adjustment layer over the top here of TV damage. I like to use a lot of like organic type effects and things like that. These are from Sapphire. I'm typically using Red Giant and Sapphire on most of my projects. Then we've got an analog effect here from Red Giant. And then we've got an analog effect here on this UI. So if I turn this off, you can see this is what it looked like, which is, it's awesome without it, but I just wanted to make it, you know, more visually engaging. So here's two more clips here. Again, we're coming back to uni analog, some jitter frames, some analog again. So I'm not using like every effect in my arsenal, right? If you can only own one set of effects, it's gonna be Sapphire, that's it. Like Sapphire secondary would be Red Giant. Those are the two suites of effects I think every motion designer should own. You can see here, analog is giving it like these dots kind of ball action look to it, which is really interesting here. And then, you know, a lot of clips not affected. And then here I've got some more with effects on them. We're using the film effect from Sapphire. This is actually my favorite effect of all time. Creates some really awesome looks and it's got a lot of really nice presets. We've got one here with analog on this. So this is giving it kind of that RGB split look, which is really, this is the naked render and this is with the effect. And we've got, what we've got here, we've got Glow from Sapphire, Pixel Sorting, AV. Again, these are just all effects to give it you know, more of an organic look. Like this one's really powerful here. So if I turn off the AV Club, that's the naked render. Actually, that's the naked render without Glow. Sapphire Glow put on top. 
with some AV club, it makes it look very organic, very analog. So that's what I did with these effects kind of throughout. And then when I got to the logo here, I actually split the logo. So these are both the logos with the time remapping applied. But at the very beginning here, what I did is I applied an effect called Sapphire Feedback. And that's what's creating this feedback kind of look here with these red boxes. I thought it was really interesting. I picked a preset and kind of played around with it. And it just gave this really interesting look. And then we just cut into the straight up logo we see here. So what makes this intro so interesting is that there's a lot you know, happening here. So there's how many layers? We've got 52 layers in eight seconds. Now, I'm not one to always preach that the more layers you have, the better it looks. Sometimes you can get away with just a couple layers and it looks amazing. This one works really well because it's 52 layers and of those 52 layers, maybe 48, 49 of them are different clips from courses and workshops that I teach. And it's a visual feast for our eyes, right? In a very short amount of time, which is why it works really well for an introduction. So that's what I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, my name is Cameron with Motion Science and I'll see you in the next video.